there's a lot of debate at the moment in the context of you know, the emergence of Donald Trump as a, as a, as a, as a, as a candidate, uh, the emergence of Jeremy Corbyn in, in the UK, anti-globalisation and more radical movements on the, on the left in, uh, across the world, but also the, the, the rise of the populist right, the Brexit vote, UKIP, UKIP. There's a lot of concern really that a lot of people are being left behind by globalisation, by, by current processes of economic development. It's too business focused, it's too, it's, it's too centred around big corporations and, and, a, and a few a few elites around the world who seem to be accumulating more and more of the wealth that we all produce. I'm Andrew Cumbers, I'm the Professor of Regional Political Economy at the Adam Smith Business School and I work on issues of local, urban and regional economic development in, in the context of a global economy. My, my main focus really is on, is on thinking about how cities, regions and even countries uh, try to forge sustainable economic development paths in the context of an increasingly integrated global economy. And that takes you into the, into the realm of thinking about what economic development is, and I, I tend to take a very strong social justice focus on this, which is to, to talk about how we get to more equitable uh, forms of economic development that are going to be sustainable, and then that takes us on to issues around the environment and dealing with climate change and so on. And a lot of that is critiquing existing, very market-driven, competitive notions of economic development and, and how, do, how, do we, how do we get beyond that. And one of the things we're doing at the moment is we're compiling an index of economic democracy, which I'm very excited about. It's an ESRC-funded project. It's one of their transformative research projects, so the idea of that is that it's got to be big, cutting-edge, cutting slightly risky research that pushes the boundaries back. And, 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 and our ambition is to create an economic democracy index globally it's a bit like the UN's World Development in in Index, where we, we compile a, um, a whole a, a database of, of, uh, of um, where we measure economic democracy across across different countries. So we're, we're saying, well, actually, um, we think an important part of, of, if you like, trying to check this trend towards greater inequality and greater alienation among, amongst people, because I think that's that's really what's behind the, the emergence of people like Donald Trump. A lot of people think people are very alienated very left behind by globalization. They feel that politicians aren't listening to them anymore. And one of our, one of our uh, big uh, ideas behind this project is we, we, we think people aren't, aren't participating or engaged enough or don't feel that they, they have much power over economic decisions in their lives. So rather than just talking about you know, the problems of, democ of democracy in a political sense, we actually want to ask a much more fundamental set of questions about, well, how much democracy is there real? Is there really in people, people's everyday um, lives and reality? Because that's really what the economy deals with. So, our project is then uh, compiling uh, a, a set of indicators that try to measure different levels of public um, participation in the economy. Everything from very traditional measures to so looking at the strength of trade unions and, and how much they're represented in the economy to trying to develop a much broader set of. Uh, data and, in, and indices that, that, that include things like asking individuals in the workplace how much they think they're consulted by their boss. Um, we're also looking at the, the, the degree of all kinds of organisations uh, in the economy such as cooperatives, mutual organisations and we're, we're, we're kind of bringing all these things together in one index which is, is, a, is a heroic <laughs> kind of project. Some people could say it was a very flawed project. But we think it's important to sort of try and to set some numbers on what the extent of democracy is across the economy at the moment and how that varies across country. And the data's, you're always a bit of a prisoner to the data that's available historically, but we're trying to also capture kind of historical trend in levels of economic democracy um, for, for different countries across the, across the global economy. Another aspect of thinking about economic democracy is to think about who owns the economy. And one of the things I've been working on for quite a few years now is trying to rethink ownership of the economy and how can the economy be more democratic and that's taken me into rethinking public ownership as a category and as a term because it's, it's, it's tended to be dismissed by current mainstream politicians as something that happened in the past that was associated with nationalization but actually if you look at many of the more successful countries in terms of for example developing renewable energy a lot of the evidence is that that's being achieved through local forms of collective public democratic and cooperative ownership so I think that's a really exciting avenue as well to to develop even further in the US.